you know, I, I initially found out about Caputo Group. You've sponsored some events under that. You've gave me some amazing sponsor donations. And so I always appreciate, you know, the companies out there that are supporting women who are really trying to bring the community together and or just get extra eyes on the brands that are out there that have good culture and are genuine about their intentions in the space. So uh, I don't know if you have anything new because usually I see you exhibited or sponsored. So if you have any events you're sponsoring, plug them in. Let us know where, where you're going to be at. Right on. Yeah. So the Caputo group, I'm glad I'm so, thank you for that. And the, actually that's how we met. And I think, you know, the commonality mm -hmm. that brought you and I together is, is our sense of community and how important community is and community can be as, you know, sort of as small as your, your block, right. Or it could be the Southern California cannabis community, or it could be the cannabis community in, in general, or, you know, and all kinds of other communities, but we both feel, you know, have that, that uh, that uh, the desire to to make the communities that we touch better, and one of the reasons I joined with the Caputo Group um, was, uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, built for service. You know, I, I the, the purpose of my uh, existence on this planet, right, is to serve, and and so I do that through CV Can and, and the things that we touched on, and and then uh, my day job, uh, the Caputo Group, which is a, um, a human resource outsourcing firm. And we work in all industries, but I happen to specialize with my partner, Kevin Anderson, um, in the cannabis space. And, and really, Casey, what that's all about is uh, we help cannabis companies and it doesn't matter, you know, from seed to sale, you know, uh, sort of thing. But with their administrative challenges in the areas of human resources, workers' compensation, payroll solutions, which is particularly tricky in cannabis, as you know, uh, benefits. Um, and the idea is to help um, small and medium businesses in the cannabis space uh, by uh, leveling the playing field, taking out the administrative responsibilities so that they can be free to focus on revenue generating activities within the business. And you know how thin the margins are. And because of the 280E exception, you know, the margins in cannabis, everybody, you know, the outsider world thinks, oh, it's a gold mine and you just you make money like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, fine. <clears throat> okay. So the reality. Yeah. I mean, you know, the reality of it is that it is a sophisticated a business that is treated differently than any other type of business by not only the federal government, the state governments, the local governments, the taxing authorities, blah, 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 blah. And so what we try and do is come in and say, hey, let us help you stay compliant with human resources. Let us take your payroll issues off your table so that you have that extra administrative time to focus on really, like I said, creating revenue, building margin, and also mitigating risk. Don't carry the water, let us carry the water. And so myself and uh, my uh, uh, partner kevin anderson we speak a lot uh, at events we spoke just recently at the lucky leaf um uh, exhibit um uh, expo down in albuquerque uh last year late last year the benefits of outsourcing you know kind of thing and helping people understand and it's not only in the areas that i talked about or for the caputo group but it's outsourcing in general you know outsourcing is not what it was in 1990. there's a whole new world out there and you can increase margins and and make your operation more efficiently by outsourcing so what we do is we go around um and we'll be speaking i believe it's the imperious um uh, expo event in um february uh, down in arizona um so we're looking forward to doing that and we try and go to as many sort of cannabis um focused expos as we can and share the word about you know there's another way you know you, you know you got enough challenges let us help you carry the water and so that's kind of you know in a nutshell what the caputo group is all about once again it's all about service yeah helping others sure. You know. Yeah, I think it's important. You know, I come with banking and I say that all the time to remind people that that's that's primarily my resume is 20 years of banking. So and to be completely honest, uh, BSA and compliance. So Bank Secrecy Act, for those who don't know what BSA is. So mm -hmm. I completely you know, resonate with everything you said, safe banking act is, is just not there yet. However, I will say with them looking at descheduling or rescheduling, that may be why they're at that pivot point as to where they don't know where to go. So will that be a whole different subject? But I am curious to know, um, 
you know, with everything that you guys are doing is, do you guys have insight or a perspective on where, you know, there's always a question, deschedule or reschedule? Do you think there's a difference and do you think there'll be an impact whichever way it leans? Yeah, I, I actually do. And it's a complicated question, you know, because, you know, there, there are some of us who, generally speaking, want the government, the federal government to act. So any act, you know, taking a step down the right door, you know, is a good thing, right? Yeah. To me, I think the rescheduling uh, to, to Schedule 3 is, um, you know, a lot of um, shock and awe and frankly is is not meaningful. I mean, yes, you'll get the 280E exception out, which is super important. And for those who don't know, the 280E exception yeah. basically says that you as a cannabis um, uh a business cannot deduct normal business expenses that every other business in America can deduct. So there's a, there's, you know, rescheduling would allow those deductions, but to me, it's a half measure. The, the, you know, the, the cat is out of the bag, pick your metaphor. The statistics are in, we're talking about, we're not talking about weed. We're not talking about smoking dope, right? We're talking about plant medicine. The studies are there. The schedules are about, uh, substances that provide no medical benefit. It's clear, and it's been clear for 2,000 plus years, but whatever, um, you know, that, that there is a benefit. So to me, where I come out is take it off the schedule. It's time. And frankly, you know, it's also time to get rid of MDMA and a number of other things on schedule one that do have therapeutic benefit. And it's really time. But I'm one person. And that's just my opinion. Right, right. No, but you're a leader out in a good community. And, you know, that's why it's important that we do things like this. And we have these conversations to take, you know, to the mainstream and get people to hear from our perspective, our knowledge, our experience, where we're coming from, really emphasize on the plant medicine of it. And I think that's really where the stance is. But for me, I'm excited to see things change um, for the better, always for the better. But I do truly believe this is just to me is that when they figure out where they have the upper hand is maybe when we'll you know is maybe when the needle will move but you're right i was talking to la normal very you know big and supporting and what normal does for cannabis Great. and yeah they they kind of feel the same way with that it is he he just take the wins the little 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 wins that we can get yeah and let's maybe pivot from there. So keeping our fingers crossed that we um, don't <laughs> go on the bottom end of those things, but that's a whole different subject. Right. I mean, what I was taught just, you know, closing on that point, you know, what I was taught is, you know, policy is made by those who show up right, which we can, you know, we can see it time and time again. And what I've come to learn through um, acting, because CV is very active um, on a political basis, I shouldn't slow me strike that, not on a political basis, on a legislative basis, going uh, before city councils to talk about decreases in, in taxation, um, you know, it, it's you have to take the small wins because this is a big sea change for, you know, folks who are not necessarily that familiar with the cannabis community. So, you know, patience and continuing to show up and, and you know, like you alluded to, destigmatizing. You know, we're not this big, scary group of people, you know. Let us show you data. Let's take a, let's talk to the doctors. Let's talk to the scientists. Let's move in a direction. But uh, patience is, is, is helpful. Yeah, I like yeah.